All right, let's start off with the big question. Why was Arizona State the right place for you? Um, there's a lot of reasons why, but um, the main reason was um, uh, probably had, uh, out of the whole staff, the strongest connection was obviously my uh, former head coach, Coach Mons, but um, Kenny Dillingham uh, treated me as family as well. So, And he's the head coach, so there's that's like you can't ask more out of a head coach, but a good relationship. You know, getting to know the program, getting to know Coach Dillingham, what was your kind of vibe and, and read on just the culture of the program and the, the things that he's trying to build here in Tempe? Uh, he's trying to uh, keep in-state talent here, which is uh, good because – Last, like before he was there, wasn't really looking into in-state kids. But, um, like, every time I go there, the the players, they treat each other as family. And so you could easily say their culture is really family heavy. What, what is it like to, you know, be heading to a university that is finally placing kind of a priority on local guys like yourself? Uh, it's something special, and I believe in what he's doing. And we're going to flip it around with in-state kids and uh, the other kids that are um, uh, not in-state. So he's just building something uh, that should have been built a long time ago, which is a great thing. So what's, what's in your opinion, what's your uh, read on kind of Arizona State's reputation locally among, you know, uh, like other uh, elite uh, local guys like yourself? How that uh, reputation has evolved since Kenny Dillingham's got here? Uh, I mean... Ever since he got there, he's been trying to build a great relationship with the top prospects. And if they're not known as the top, the top prospects, you know, just ballers. So he's he's doing his job with the in-state kids. So, what is all you know when you, as you gotten to know not just the Arizona State football program, but Arizona State as as a university? What what what's, what kind of jumped out to you in terms of you know what ASU can offer you both on and off the field? Well, I like uh, that they have a business program because I'm more than a football player. Uh, I want to get into finance and stuff, and they have that and just the great environment uh, that's around. Like, I, I live five minutes away, so I could just walk over and just, like, get a feel of the environment, and it's nothing like home. You mentioned, of course, Jason Mons and making that uh, reunion here with the Sun Devil program. What's it like just kind of, you know, getting to, to uh, work again with Coach Mons? And also, what makes him such a successful head, uh, head, uh, football coach? Uh, when he's a coach, he coaches more than just football. He teaches a uh, valuable mm -hmm. life, and that's what he did at Suaro. And I know if I go there, he's going to tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. And that's all you need uh, to be successful in life. Now, as a local guy, you know, how much of a how much appeal does it have to be, you know, one of those potential hometown hero type guys, a Chase Lucas, DJ Foster, uh, Nikhil Harry types? You know, how, how appealing is that to you to have that potential to do that up and, and rep for your hometown? Uh, I just I just needed the platform. Now I'm about to go do it. <laughs> and of course, you know, you, you and, and Rylan uh, Dillard Allen are just kind of you know, two of the first guys here in, in the committing to in the 2025 class and kind of building that uh, Arizona connection. Uh, are you guys just kind of, you know, working your way into maybe you can try to rally others to be, you know, kind of continue that wave. We've seen the success ASU had, has had with the Texas to Tempe pipeline, but are you guys going to be kind of at that forefront of kind of the Arizona state home movement? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get a few players. I'm trying to get Gio Richardson from Basha, Logan Powell from Brophy, Garrett Martin, my teammate. And I'm just trying to get the best of the best that I've seen. So, Hopefully we can get him to come over. And of course, you know, uh, last season was difficult uh, with the with the injury and just you know kind of coming back. H how tough was that for you of just you know not being able to get out there and contribute and you know maybe put some some good film out there? Uh, it was tough because you know I love ball, but um, just I had to view it as a learning lesson and more of a study to the game, uh, just to see if I like this is actually something I would want to do. And obviously it is because I stayed engaged the whole time, but. Um, my family, teammates, coaches, even the staff at the school, uh, they helped me hold, they helped me held my head high. So it was kind of, it wasn't just me, it was a collective group effort. And one thing that, I, that I've that uh, i found in talking to guys who are coming back from uh, big injuries is just kind of the, the mental rehab is sometimes as arduous as the physical rehab uh, and just, you know, kind of not being out, be able to be out there with your team. Uh, how, how is that aspect like, you know, in terms of, you know, not just getting healthy physically, but also kind of, you know, the mental, uh, you know, overcoming those mental hurdles in, on your way back? Oh, uh, no, the mental battle is probably 
probably need a more focus on than the physical battle because it's easy to check out of something like going to rehab almost every day like your your mind got to tell you you're going to do it it's not just you doing it it's like your mind is controlling you so definitely have to have the mental of getting better each and every day to come back better and stronger now you're a guy who uh, when you're out there on the field can uh, make some big big plays both on offense and on defense uh, what do you have a, a sense as of right now where asu perhaps sees your future um yeah uh right now uh i want to be a db but uh, i'm not afraid to play receiver i know what i can do as a receiver and on the offensive side i play with a lot of confidence and i just know i could be a problem on uh defense or on offense but on defense it just comes natural to me the game's slower and I just feel like it would be easier and something I could keep building up on. What, uh, what's more rewarding for you, making like a, a big-time play on defense with a big hit or a big pick or making a big-time touchdown catch on offense? What's, what's more thrilling to, for you? Mm. I said big-time pick. <laughs> uh, so any, any ASU fans who might not have uh, seen you in action, you know, what, uh, give, our, give our viewers and listeners a scouting report. You know, I, I guess in your case, kind of t- two ways. You know, what, what kind of skills do you bring on the defensive side and what kind of skills uh, do you, would you bring on, on offense? Uh, on the defensive side, I bring a lot of knowledge. Um, I play fast. I play physical. And just I play confident. That's the main thing. For both sides, I play confident. And I, I like to express myself on the field. So you're going to see a lot of energy on the field for sure. Right. And, uh, you know, obviously when you're looking ahead to this, uh, you know, final season uh, for uh, for uh, Suara, what's uh, what are some of the goals you have for yourself? Um, obviously, you know, really uh, help the team win. So whatever follows along with that, I mean, that's all I can ask for. And I just want another championship before I leave. And then, you know, when you're looking ahead to, you know, just, uh, you know, your college career is on the horizon. What are some of the things that you want to work for and towards this season, you know, in terms of uh, improving your game and getting ready to make that jump up to the next level? Be more of a vocal leader and uh, inspiring my teammates. Because I know if I could do that, then I wouldn't be afraid to do it uh, when I walk into ASU.